Thank you very much to the council for helping us remember this beautiful building that we did 10 years ago and celebrated again 10 years later. And thank you to Mr. Chen for allowing me to talk about it before he did. <laughs> thank you so much for that. Let's begin. The linked hybrid. I would like to start with a brief introduction of our office, which I hope somewhat helps understand some of the concepts that we were trying to put forward in the building. Um, Stephen Hall Architects, we're only with two offices in New York and in Beijing. We don't take a great load of projects, but we rather take projects that we really believe in with great clients. And we like to spend more time working on fewer number of projects than the other way around. Um, if you have followed our work, I hope that you have seen that we don't necessarily follow an architectural style, but maybe we follow a thought process, some sort of a dynamic in which site and program are very unique to each one of our projects. We no not only develop the project within the constraints of the physical reality of the site, but also we bring in historical references to the site into the design process. Light and material and detail, very important to everything we do, uh, considering natural light, one of the most um, playful, fun materials to work with, and idea and phenomena. And that relates to you know, the project that I'm going to show you next and the concepts behind it. I hope that you have seen that in all of our work, every project is very different. Every project is, there's a common thread that begins at the beginning of concept design and educates the entire design process all the way to furniture uh, design or materiality selection. Uh, under that methodology, we've done over 70 projects in 17 different countries from this, these two small offices. Uh, in China, in terms of the big buildings, um, we do most of the big stuff here in Asia. Um, I hope that you have an opportunity to visit the Banka Center here in Shenzhen. It's not too far from here. If you have an extra day, I highly recommend it. Or our Raffle City project for Capital Land is in Chengdu, another project in which is very unique, very different, and embodies a whole bunch of concepts that we continue to work with that are also part of the linked hybrid building. In Europe, we are developing the LM Harbor Tower, which is also very site-related. It celebrates the opening of Denmark and the gateway through its harbor and how the two sides of the harbor, the L and the M part, kind of come together in a handshake through this portal. And, of course, the new project that we're doing now won't tell you much. You will probably see more of it very soon here in Shenzhen, not too far from the China Resources Building, which we went to yesterday night. Another project that is very site-specific, very uh, ambitious in its um, conceptual uh, proposal. Now, the linked hybrid. This conversation will be two parts. The first one, I will remind everybody what we were trying to achieve and how that pan out in the future. And, and Mr. Chen will probably give a better account as to how the building works today compared to uh, the proposals that we put forward at the beginning. 2007 was a very exciting time in Beijing when before the Olympics, uh, the city was relocating most of these light industrial sites within the second and third ring roads to outside edges of the city. That left uh, several of these sites, including our site here, open for renovation, green renovation, restoration, open space integration, and the like, in a sense that it could be also applicable to the commercial aspects and requirements of our clients, Mother Land. Uh, this was at the very intersection of the second ring road in the northeast corner of the city, a perfect, great location for uh, a development. Before 1980s, Beijing was by and large some sort of a horizontal city, with a few exceptions along Jiangomen Y or the Second Ring Road, uh, the city was pretty much a horizontal city, two or three stories high. Then the 80s came with bad music, uh, bad clothing, and also the skyscrapers for China, for Beijing at least, in which there was a reproduction of all these glass towers in a, some sort of a new form of architecture that started um, covering the city, especially between the Second and Third Ring Roads very close to where the project, area, project site was. So from the very beginning, from the very conceptual approach of this project was to try to bring down, bring back the idea of the low scale, the neighborhood type of feeling uh, in Beijing and do some sort of a mix or hybrid, therefore the name, of forms that could be tall, could be low, and could be horizontally connected. Uh, the term hybrid also applied not only to the form of the building but also to 
the programs that we would include in them. Uh, for most of you who have done work in, in China, you, you are familiar with the concept of mixed use, which really is a you know, big podium, uh, commercial functions mostly, with zero, very little relationship with the site, with the surroundings, and program towers sitting on top, residential or commercial or office towers. To challenge that notion, the idea of integrating or injecting these public, semi-public, and private functions, not only at the base, but also at different levels of the building in three dimensions. So you will see this in, the few, in a few more slides. All of which surrounding a central plaza, an open plaza, which for all of you who have also worked in China, you know that opening a site and connecting it to the city and, and, and allowing it to remain open and porous, it's in itself a challenge. Um, we were able to do that through a network of pedestrian paths on the ground floor, a central plaza, and also elevating pedestrian connections on the rooftops of the smaller buildings, and also within the towers with a series of bridges, which I will discuss in a few minutes. Um, this resulted in today, nowadays, um, allowing this site to be truly, fully open, receiving 8,000 visitors a week, close to half a million a year, and I challenge anybody to tell me a mixed-use project in China, mostly residential, that allows so many people, not part of the, the compound, to actually have access to uh, its interior guard, gardens. rather. That was done by, like, again, injecting public and semi-public functions into the project. There was a base level, which we call the public plaza, animated by a cinematech. For all the New Yorkers in the room, you can think of um, the film forum in New York City is the three movie screen type, right? In terms of size and number of seats. And at the top, what we would call the sky promenade, there would be a series of bridges connecting all the towers um, with public and semi-public functions. This connection of all the towers would become a destination of and in itself. And as we architects like to call it, it would provide a cinematic experience as we go around the, bu the buildings, recognizing the ground floor, the public areas, the greenery, and also the public spaces generated between the towers. It would also become some sort of an iconic presence for the project. And nowadays, if you tell anybody in Beijing, uh, we did that building, oh, the one with the bridges. So it became kind of a staple uh, element in the design, although there was not obviously the intention of doing so. Um, our idea was at the beginning just to fit out these bridges uh, very simply, allowing the client to have the most amount of flexibility to program and operate them later. Hope, hoping that the function, would, the function would be derived by the space planning and the circulation planning of, of the bridges themselves. Uh, nowadays, it's used as what they call the cloud terrace, which is an amphitheater above ground, and many other functions have been fitted, health and fitness center into the bridges two museums, and we're happy to see that there's actually culture being installed in this, in this build, in these bridges, and some of it traditional art, which is interesting to have that juxtaposition between traditional art and new forms of architecture. We proposed a, what we call a phenomenological experience, having a swimming pool in a bridge, swimming in the air, and they, they did it. They did it, and it looks great, and it's used for, uh, for what I understand with great success. We also propose something that is very atypical, or totally atypical from a mostly residential compound, which is insert a hotel. Bring in some sort of a transient occupancy to this site. It works very well for what I hear as well. But the crown jewel, so to speak, is this cinematic. And I go back to it because this one is the one that really activates the public space, allows the complex to remain open, and brings in a new type of demographics into this site. We were obviously hoping that there would be great movies exhibited there, but we were also hoping that the function of this building would transcend the just the logical exhibition of films. Uh, we're very happy to um, uh, report now that, I've been, that it's been the home for eight film festivals, international film festivals, three drama film festivals as well. So it's bringing in, it's creating a place in Beijing to host these new demographics. People educated abroad, people who studied or came back, or several expats. So it's creating, there are not so many of these places in Beijing. Beijing continues to be a very traditional city when it comes to culture, as opposed to Shenzhen or other places in China. 
Um, our aspirations were beyond the integration of public functions or public spaces. It had a lot to do with sustainability, which is a subject that we hold very close to our hearts, something that we integrate in each one of our projects. And working very well with a great client like Motherland, we were able to do the largest geothermal field ever done in China, 660 wells, 100 meters into the ground, among other uh, functions. This might not be the prettiest picture, but maybe it shows you the reality of doing a geothermal field, which is a very mature technology elsewhere in the world, at the time in Beijing. It was an effort. It took a lot of grit. It took a lot of partnership and vision from our client to actually accept something like this in a residential building. Um, heating and cooling through a slab activation, chilled slab or, 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 or radiant heating, something that is very mature. We've done it everywhere in the world. In China, in a residential project, very seldom, you never see it, along with underfloor air distribution systems. Blinds from Germany that cut down 70% of shading coefficient while still allowing all the views to the gardens. Recycled water, 41% of water savings. And several other measures that how have they penned in time. Uh, right now, just the geothermal system alone saves you over 2 million degrees of energy by, by, per year. And it compares to 80% of energy savings compared to just a gas-fired boiler system. So in terms of integration of landscape, open space, uh, different types of program functions in the building, our sustainability strategies, we can say after 10 years that we're pretty proud of, of having a project that has worked beyond the expectations that we set out to do as architects. Uh, thank you, Robert. <laughs> I need to switch to uh, Chinese. Robert took two minutes out of my time, so I would like to have my two minutes back. Now, the project was nominated by the 10-year awards. That was a bit of a surprise, because it's been over 15 years from design onwards. Even though in the last 15 years we've been through financial crisis, however, the, the excellent high-rise buildings continue to rise in the world. And this project was only 66 meters high. And it was designed like 15 years ago. However, in retrospect, it is still uh, very relevant. In 2000, 2003 and four, there was a team who went to New York to look at the firms regarding their design. We have seen something that is very different from our design brief. You know, we, we kind of feel that design brief was a leading and forward-looking brief. Because in the brief, we asked for a sustainable green project, residential project. At the time, we didn't have a concept of green building yet. Mr. Snoho has been shown us something even more aggressive and progressive, I should say. Even more progressive in the, in the design they presented. Something that's not uh, in the brief. Cinemas, hotel, uh, swimming pool in the air, gymnasiums. Well, such a design was, uh, it wouldn't happen uh, in the US, I suppose. Just, just to understand, just try to understand, China is accelerating. 15 years ago, China's GDP per, pack, per capita was only 1,500 US dollars. 15 years ago in Beijing, the house is only costing one-tenth of what is now today's. So in front of such a progressive or aggressive design, the developer has an important decision to make. Are they going to go ahead with this progressive design? Or are they going to take a step back to the conventional and the traditional residential projects? Because in China, up to this day, 99% of residential projects are still public communities, which is, uh, oh, sorry, they are still private communities, which is not connected to the uh, neighborhood. They are not really uh, linked or connected to the uh, city. However, in this design, we seem to have open community and mixed functions. And the model, you can also see, it is very different. It is very atypical. Uh, so therefore, 
uh, he he's uh, very um, you know aggressively um, trying to convince the developer to adopt this design. Structurally, it is very challenging. Eight residential buildings and one hotel connected uh, on the air. Structurally and firefighting, those are really beyond anything we have seen in the fire code in China. So we have to uh, we have to uh, perform expert review and to achieve such a structure. It's going to be a challenge for costing and budgeting, and also in 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 this area. You know, you can see we're going to use steel, cement, and uh, you know, and also the uh, steel structures have to be combined together, uh, including reinforced concrete, reinforced con uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, 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 and also steel concrete as well as steel structure. So it's very difficult. The largest span was 42 meters above, above, and also. Uh, sent cantilevers were three um, stories high, and they also have to withstand uh, earthquake at eight uh, Richter scale. So it is uh, it was a pretty challenging. Of course, all the challenges have been overcome with the efforts of engineers, contractors, and developers. After 42 months, the project was finally completed uh, before the opening of 2008 Beijing. Olympics. The project has been awarded numerously in China and, uh, and, and overseas, including including the Beat ND and the Greens uh, three, Triple Star in China and Zhantian Yo, which was the uh, Statue. Statue was the first generation of Chinese modern engineer who built the first modern railroad in China, and also, and also 2009, the CTBUH, uh, the best uh, uh, tall building in the world. Regarding the sustainability, uh, has it been realized after 10 years? Has the concept? Which was be behind, uh, which is before its time. Even is before its time. In nowadays, in China, has such a concept, which is so advanced at the time, was it accepted? Because it was a residential project. We have to face open market. We have to try to appeal to different home buyers in Beijing. Of course. Uh, MoMA as a operator and developer, we have been through the whole process from development, uh, development and operation. After 10 years, in retrospect, the project was an excellent performance with regard to super energy efficiency with the uh, geothermal, and uh, it has been working perfectly even to this day. At the beginning, developer was not sure, so we make 100% redundancy. So if the thermal pump will be able to support the heating and cooling, however, we still build on top of it a boiler system. So it's a hundred percent redundancy. But the redundancy was never put into use at the same time with the geothermal pumps. So the efficiency of these uh, th geothermal pumps has been working admirably for ten years. And the six hundred eighty apartments that has been operating. Uh, admirable, uh, admirably with the government mandated standards. Uh, and also the residents here, they enjoy living here. And, and we can truly see a mixed uh, neighborhood with libraries, office, and some of the offices were retrofitted. There are lots of co-working space, uh, startup and make up space, maker space. Residen residents, they can have a good time. Uh, in the lawns, the parks, the hotels. In winter, and uh, children actually skate uh, on, uh, on the lake. Uh, and also there is the moment uh, uh, hotel was also a success operationally. And the MoMA kindergarten has been running its train operations around the country. So MoMA kindergarten has been a great brand. And also the Hotel Momamek has been selected as the best uh, boutique hotel list nationwide. And, and also it has also become the uh, chain um, brand and across uh, the nation. 
And also the culture and an art and is an also well organized and in the community. And also for the residential community with so many culture and artistic and activities. So that is also a very good and benchmark. And we can also see that for this project, uh, although it is an uh, widely awarded, but actually more importantly, we would like to see whether it is recognized and by the local residents and, and also other people. And uh, we believe uh, that maybe 10 or 15 years ago, and uh, we believe that uh, the sustainable and also the green innovation have already been materialized uh, right now. Thank you.